Well, Elon Musk bought Twitter not all that long ago, and he's been a very hands-on owner. He's been formulating Twitter policy in real time, banning accounts, bringing back accounts, doing everything by Twitter poll. Uh, Over the weekend, Elon Musk put out a poll asking whether he should step down as the active head of Twitter. This doesn't mean he'll give up ownership of Twitter, of course, but he put out a poll saying that he would pledge to abide by the results of the poll and asking whether people should allow him to remain the CEO of Twitter. And then the poll results came in and nearly 60% of people on Twitter were polled, said that Musk should not remain the CEO of Twitter. Now, here's the thing. I think Musk is smart enough to know what the result was going to be ahead of time. I really doubt that he thought that 60% of people are going to say, yeah, so what this really looks more like is a transition plan. He's, he wants to make it look like the people wanted him to step out of the way and then he'll appoint somebody else to run Twitter. But this does speak to the way that Twitter is currently being run, which is very ad hoc. Again, I don't have a problem with that because I would rather that there be someone at the top of the food chain to blame as opposed to the way Twitter was being run. But this does throw the entire social media system into at least some chaos because nobody actually knows what's coming next. I have no information suggesting that Elon Musk actually knows who would replace him as CEO of Twitter. It's not like he has somebody waiting in the wings. And this is all a setup. This is all seat of the pants kind of stuff, which makes it on the one hand fun and on the other hand, slightly terrifying for for those who actually are trying to figure out what standards Twitter is attempting to apply here. According to the Wall Street Journal, The majority of Twitter users said Elon Musk should step down as chief of the company in a poll the billionaire pledged to follow, casting no uncertainty on the social media platform after more than seven weeks of turmoil since he took it over. More than 17 million users had voted by the time the poll on the platform closed after 6 a.m. Eastern time, with 57.5% saying he should leave as the head of the company he bought in October for $44 billion. Musk had said when he launched the Twitter poll on Sunday, he would abide by the results. It's not clear who would be taking over Twitter, Inc. if Musk steps aside or what his role would remain, given that he still owns the company. Most of the company's prior leadership was either fired or left after he took over. And by the way, it's not going to be a great job. For all those people who are clamoring and saying out there, I could do it. Well, Musk is just going to fire you after two weeks because all that will mean is that he stands sort of behind whoever the Twitter CEO is. Musk tweeted, quote, no one wants the job who can actually keep Twitter alive. There is no successor. Now, one of the reasons why Musk is doing this is because his other companies like SpaceX and Tesla have been suffering on the stock market. Shares in Tesla have fallen more than 57% this year, frustrating some retail investors who partly blame Musk's focus on Twitter for the decline. And this is not unusual. Anytime the market perceives Musk as a volatile figure, his stock drops. And then it always comes back. This happened with Tesla when Musk went on Joe Rogan's show and he smoked pot. And for a moment there, it looked like the Tesla stock was going to be in rough shape. And then, of course, Tesla pulled out of the tailspin and soon it was doing fine. Tesla shares were jumping pre-market Monday amid the suggestion that Musk would stop running Twitter and return his attention back to the engineering company that he founded. There have been questions since Musk first showed interest in buying Twitter, how he would juggle running that company while also pursuing all of his other endeavors. Bill Nelson, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's administrator, this month said he had asked SpaceX president Gwynne Shotwell if Twitter would divert from the rocket company's mission. She assured me it would not be a distraction. Musk said last month that he had too much work on his plate. Now, again, it's been a pretty chaotic couple of months under Musk. Much of what he has done has been excellent. So, for example, the breaking of new Twitter files, demonstrating what exactly Twitter was doing to shut down free speech before Musk took over. Musk had said that he was essentially a free speech libertarian when he took over. And then he has sort of activated, an, as I say, an ad hoc policy where he bans people and then he brings them back based on Twitter polls where the standards are not entirely clear. And what's funny to me about that is that the entire media are caterwauling about this. They're screaming to the heavens, screaming to God about why exactly The standards are so opaque and changeable. It's like, welcome to the party, pal. It's been like this for the last 10 years. The only difference is that this time, you guys are sometimes getting clocked. But the real thing that Musk has done here is, of course, revealed what was going on at Twitter during the Trump era. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, a hard year on the economy means that essential practical gifts will be in high demand this year. Also, delicious gifts. Give the most essential delicious gift of all, America's best meat and seafood from Good Ranchers. With discounts on orders of five boxes or more, you can save on gifts for the whole family. When you give a box of Good Ranchers, you're giving them a true steakhouse experience with 100% American, USDA Prime, and Upper Choice cuts of beef, chicken, and seafood. Other meat delivery companies, even your local grocery stores, import lower quality meat from overseas. Don't give your friends and family less than America's best this year. Not sure what to order? Good Ranchers now offers gift cards so you can let your friends and family members choose for themselves or give the gift of a subscription and inflation-proof somebody's meat budget. Go to GoodRanchers.com, use code BEN at checkout to get 35 bucks off your gift. That's GoodRanchers.com, code BEN, for 35 bucks off. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. Now, I know that Good Ranchers is really good stuff. They actually got me a kosher steak, and it is absolutely delicious. 
They got it for me. They grilled it up for me. They tell you it was mouthwatering. Good Ranchers will do the same for you, your family, your friends, anybody you buy Good Ranchers for. Head on over to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Ben and check out. Get 35 bucks off your gift. That's GoodRanchers.com. Code Ben for 35 bucks off. And so over the weekend also, Matt Taibbi, who was a guest on this program last week, former Rolling Stone journalist, he revealed how much contact was had between the higher-ups at Twitter and the FBI. And this should scare everybody. When the FBI is contacting social media companies and telling them what to put up and what to take down and all the rest of it, predicated not on typical sort of law enforcement procedures, not based on warrants, not based on investigations, but based on simply the FBI's sense that they don't want something up. That's pretty scary stuff. Taibbi posted late on Friday afternoon, the Twitter files are revealing more every day about how the government collects, analyzes, and flags your social media content. Twitter's content with the FBI, contact with the FBI was constant and pervasive as if it were a subsidiary. Between January 2020 and November 2022, there were over 150 emails between the FBI and former Twitter trust and safety chief, Yoel Roth. Some are mundane, like San Francisco agent Elvis Chen wishing Roth a happy new year, along with a reminder to attend our quarterly call next week. Others are requests for information into Twitter users related to active investigations. But a surprisingly high number are requests by the FBI for Twitter to take action on election misinformation, even involving joke tweets from low follower accounts. The FBI's social media-focused task force, known as FTIF, created in the wake of the 2016 election, swelled to 80 agents and corresponded with Twitter to identify alleged foreign influence and election tampering of all kinds. Federal intelligence and law enforcement reach into Twitter included the Department of Homeland Security, which partnered with security contractors and think tanks to pressure Twitter to moderate content. Matt Taibbi reports it's no secret the government analyzes bulk data for all sorts of purposes. But the Twitter files show something new. Agencies like the FBI and DHS regularly sending social media content to Twitter through multiple entry points pre-flagged for moderation. What stands out is the sheer quantity of reports from the government. Some are aggregated from public hotlines. There's an unanswered question. Do agencies like the FBI and DHS do in-house flagging work themselves, or are they farming it out? One former intelligence officer said, you have to prove to me that inside the effing government, you can do any kind of massive data or AI search. Taibbi says there is a master canine quality to the FBI's relationship to Twitter. There's a November 2022 email, for example, in which the FBI San Francisco notified Twitter it wanted action on four specific accounts. Twitter personnel in that case went on to look for reasons to suspend all four accounts. Just to show that the FBI can be hyper intrusive in both directions, they also asked Twitter to review a blue leaning account for a different joke, except here it was more obvious that the person who kids a lot was actually kidding. Pretty much all of the right wing accounts ended up being suspended by Twitter at the behest of the FBI. Now, this, of course, is pretty scary stuff. You don't really want the FBI coordinating with the social media companies to determine what should be taken down, what should be left up. Many of the accounts that the FBI was targeting were satirical in nature. Many of them were relatively low engagement and some were suspended, most with a generic thanks Twitter letter. When told of the FBI flagging, one of the people suspended said, my, my thoughts initially were, seems like prime facie one a First Amendment violation. Holy cow, me, an account with the reach of an amoeba three, what else are they looking at? I can't believe the FBI is policing jokes on Twitter. That's crazy, said one of the users. But that's exactly what was happening. And this is one of the reasons why it was important for Musk to take over because Musk is revealing all of the bad activity of the government in cahoots with Twitter. Now, at the same time, as I say, the Musk's running of Twitter has been extraordinarily ad hoc. I've used that phrase a bunch of times. He's just doing it sort of seat of the pants. So for example, he suspended Taylor Lorenz. Taylor Lorenz is just a garbage pseudo reporter over at the Washington Post. She spends all day just irritating people on social media and then tracking down her enemies on social media. And in the case of libs of TikTok, actually doxing people on social media. Well, she was actually briefly suspended from Twitter over the weekend. She acted as though she had been shipped to the gulags under Stalin or something. She was back on social media talking about her tremendously difficult period of Twitter expulsion in, in pretty short order. But um, she, uh, yeah, she, she came back online, by the way, and then she was sharing memes and all this. But she, she was suspended because of doxing of libs of TikTok. Now, that's not a good standard. I think Taylor Lorenz is garbage, and I think there are many times where she does things that ought to get her suspended or expelled from Twitter, including doxing people like libs of TikTok. However, Taylor Lorenz, you can't retroactively decide to suspend people. You can't decide two years later because Taylor Lorenz did something to libs of TikTok that, that now she ought to be suspended because otherwise there's no standard at all. Uh, I, I will say it was pretty funny. Taylor Lorenz found out she'd been suspended. She obviously was pretty happy about it. And then she ended up dropping off of her own Instagram feed. She had an Instagram feed in which she was announcing, or her TikTok feed, in which she was announcing this. And all of the all of the comments 
on the TikTok feed were about how much people hated Taylor Lorenz. <laughs> she ended up running away. Here's what it sounded like. Um, oh my God. This is just a bunch of Elon fans. All right. Oh, Aaron Space Museum. Hi. Um, guys, I did have only three tweets because my tweets auto delete and they have since 2014. Anyway, I do have to go, um, but I love you guys. And it was so fun to get to chat with you. Okay, so see you later, Taylor. We'll catch you later. But, okay, Taylor Lorenz ended up being reinstated. Here's the bottom line. Bottom line is this. Whoever is going to come in, for Musk, because now he's pledged that he's going to step aside and he's going to put in some sort of new CEO. Here is the standard that ought to be applied. The standard that ought to be applied is a pure First Amendment free speech standard. That's what ought to happen. And then all other standards ought to be made transparent. If you're going to downgrade tweets that are First Amendment protected, but you don't want getting wide dissemination, you should have a transparent process whereby people can quickly see why the thing is being downgraded. I will say that, that Musk has been radically transparent, even though he is doing things, seat of the pants. He's being very transparent about why he is doing things and how he is doing things. And the answer is he's doing because he feels like it. Whoever comes in next should continue that policy of radical transparency, but should take a very strict First Amendment standard with regard to Twitter in the United States. Well, one of the big problems for international companies like Twitter is that the free speech standards in the United States are not the free speech standards that apply in, say, France or Britain, where actual, quote unquote, hate speech can be prosecuted. They don't have the same First Amendment standards over in Europe. So the best that Twitter probably can do, realistically speaking, is promulgate standards that are allowed by various governments in various parts of the West. All righty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be taking your calls. Plus, Japan is beginning to arm up in anticipation of what could be a very volatile situation with China. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.